What are the top five tips for your first ultra? Should you go from couch to 100K? What length poles should you choose? And how do you clean a hydration bladder? Find out in my Q&A series, answering all your trail running questions. Hi, I'm Claire and thank you for tuning into Wild Ginger Running, the trail and ultra running advice and inspiration channel. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button and any books or gear that I mention in my videos, you'll find links to in the YouTube description below. As always, a special thanks to everyone who shares my films, old and new, on social media. Can you spot yourself here? Thanks everybody. And if you'd like to be entered into my monthly competition to win 500 pounds worth of running gear or enjoy other perks from Wild Ginger Running, like getting your questions answered preferentially and having a say on what I cover on this channel, head over to my Patreon page now. The link is in the description below. So let's answer that first question. Ads MC wants tips for his first ultra, the Lakeland Trails 55K in June. Well, firstly, congratulations on signing up for your first ultra ads, and I'm pleased to see that you're stepping up beyond the marathon distance slowly with a 34 miler to start with, as there really is no rush to complete these longer distances. Never feel under any pressure to keep running further, everyone. The key is to stay healthy, keep fit, and enjoy yourself. So I have a top five tips for you based on my experience ultra running since 2012. And I also asked the UK Run Chat and the UK Trail Chat communities on Twitter for their tips too. So from me, number one is about training. Do your long runs at an all day chatting pace where you're able to hold a conversation easily. So I do mine with an average heart rate of about 140 to 150 beats per minute. And then I use shorter interval and tempo sessions during the week to build up speed. So over time, that means you can run faster and faster at this low heart rate for your long runs. Number two, try eating lots of different snacks during your long runs to work out what you can tolerate. So check out this film here for 17 different ideas and last week's ultra nutrition chat with sports dietitian Alex Cook. Number three, look closely at the race info now rather than leaving it till the day before the race. The week before, decide what kit you're wearing and pack it all the night before so that there are no last minute panics. It's wise not to try anything new on race day, so stick to the food and the kit that you know. Number four, on race day, it's absolutely vital to start slower than you think. We've all done it. It's so easy to get caught up in the event. People will be herring off, leave them to it, go at your own steady pace, go at your all day pace. You'll catch many of them up at about 20 miles. Number five, stretch ASAP after the race. Keep moving and stretching and you'll help to ease some of the soreness in your muscles. Even find a nice cold stream or lake to soak yourself in. I find this has always really helped with my recovery. I also got some great comments from ultra runners on Twitter. So Ben Burrell says, train your stomach as well as your legs by eating on your training runs the same way that you will in the ultra. Um, Anita Bean, he suggests, has some good articles and advice on this. Pauline Lane says, make sure you start fueling early on in the run. Um, don't do what she did and um, get so excited and forget to eat or drink for the first 14 miles on her first ultra. Two Owls else says, do nothing new on race day and learn what keeps you going in training. Pascal Mathenay says, start slow. Lewis Atkins says, walk the hills. Sim Buzzard says, enjoy every minute. You've chosen to be there. Hashtag, soak it all in and eat lots. Semolina says, keep smiling. It does actually make things easier. And Laura Frogger says, do it with a friend. Joanna Brain says, run your own race and don't compare yourself to others on the trail. That's really good advice. Rachel Fawcett says, remember that every emotional low is followed by a high. So don't give up when that low kicks in. Jeff McCarthy says, break it down into tiny achievements like the next tree, the next climb. And bit by bit, you'll succeed. Summing it all up nicely though is Lucia Leonard who advises, enjoy the experience. Don't stress out about pace or time, chat to people, take photos, smile and laugh, thank the volunteers and be present in the moment. Thank you for all your great tips on Twitter guys. Have a great run ads and enjoy your first 50k. Question two, Graham Band wants to know how to care for his hydration bladder. So my advice is similar here as for bottles. Whatever you're using, I would wash them as soon as I finished running and dry them with a tea towel or leave them to dry on the draining board. For bladders, you can also take the valve off the end and leave the tube to drip dry. 
For water, a gentle clean like this will be enough, but if you use energy powders or electrolyte tablets, you'll need something stronger. So here you can use Milton sterilisation products as you would with baby's bottles. Some people also keep their bladders in the freezer to stop bugs growing. I haven't done this though. But overall, rinsing and cleaning as soon as you finish your run should keep the bladder or bottles squeaky clean for longer. So good luck Graham, I hope that helps. Question three, Robert Jordan asks if I think he is mad to have a goal of couch to 100K in one year. He was 20 stone in August last year and he's now 14 stone and running 10 to 12 miles at the moment. Wow, well, firstly, congratulations, Robert. Shifting six stone in half a year is very impressive. I don't wanna dampen your enthusiasm here, but I would really recommend that you did couch to marathon in 2019, then 100K in 2020. So watch this film about building endurance here, apart from Tina, who I wouldn't recommend copying. Whether you're overweight or not, it's much better if you have patience and build up gradually to avoid burnout and injury. Also check out last month's Q&A, where super enduro coach, Paul Giblin, said that the challenge is getting your body to handle the impact of consistent high volume training so there's no need to rush towards your first 100k. These super long distances have become really trendy recently but honestly there's really no reason to be hasty about getting them done. The marathon distance is still a great badge of honour and, and it's not all about distance with trails either as there's terrain, there's hills, there's weather, they all make a big impact too and of course the quality of the views as well. You've done brilliantly to lose all that weight, Robert, and I'd be really happy to see you train for a solid marathon this year and then 100K by the end of 2020, so I hope that helps. Quick fire questions. Guinevere Bone asks when I will be reviewing the Ultra Superior 4.0. Well, a pair is winging its way to me right now, Guinevere, and I have a pair of Innovate Graphene Mudclaw 260s as well and some new Oriox Malmos on test. So tune into my live gear chats at 8.30 p.m. every Wednesday to see how they're holding up. Stay tuned. Jason Fisher wants to know if my DNF talk from the National Running Show will be available on YouTube. Yes, it is. Here. Enjoy. Arlene M wants to know more about packs with insulation for winter as her drinking tube and some of the water froze last winter. Yikes. Well, yes, you can get hydration bladder insulation jackets like this and pipe insulators like this too. Once you've had a drink, blow the water back into the bladder so it doesn't freeze in the tube too. Martin Yardi wants some new fixed length poles. What length should he go for? So to cover everything, uphill, downhill and flat, you want your elbow at a right angle. See this film here. However, Martin says he uses his poles mainly for uphills, so he could possibly do with five centimetres shorter. But what if that changes? I'd still be inclined to get your all-rounder length, Martin, or better still, first get a pair of variable length poles and see which length you settle on. And then for your second pair, get fixed length poles at that length. If money's an issue, take a look at the Outkit Carbon Marathon Ultra Twins for only £72 a pair. They are a great value option. This week's random thing that I saw which was cool is an utterly delicious chocolate made especially for runners. So I caught up with creator Carol Armitage at the National Running Show and she wanted to make something super tasty with performance and recovery boosting ingredients in. So here she is explaining this at the show. Right, so the chocolate is an 80% chocolate um, and it's, um, it's slightly less bitter than a normal dark chocolate that you would have associated with an 80%. So it's got a higher cacao butter base, but less sugar. So it's also diabetic friendly as well. Um, it's vegan friendly and gluten free. And basically what we've done is we've put organic natural toppings on each of the bars. So the first one here is apple pie, which is good for performance and it's good for your digestion because it's got the cinnamon and uh, star anise and ginger, apricots and apples, which is just good to soothe the stomach. So especially for runners who um, obviously with your stomach's going a bit funny and your organs shifting, it's really good to sort of soothe before you, you start your run. And then after, you've got the, the Funky Monkey, which is bananas, Brazil nuts, flaxseed and hazelnuts. And again, this is, it gives you the selenium, the potassium, the, ma the magnesium that you need for sort of muscle recovery. And then obviously with the chocolate as well, you've got the cacao boost as well. And then this one we've got as a daily booster, which if you're doing endurance running, it's really great because it's got the smoked sea salt, so it replaces the salt level. 
um, but also it has the cacao that sort of keeps fueling you forward, but on a day-to-day -day basis as well. It's a really good mental well-being boost. It increases your serotonin levels, but also reduces your cortisol levels, so your stress levels start to dip down. In, in huge quantities, chocolate is bad for you, like everything. It's, it's all about quality and quantity. What I'm trying to promote is basically you can have chocolate on a day-to-day -day basis, but it has to be in the right quantities. And so all of these are within the right quantities and it's a good quality. So you don't feel like you, you're missing out. You, you know, you've got the right amount of chocolate hits. It curbs the sugar cravings and, you know, you're doing your body some good at the same time. I for one think Carol's chocolate is delicious and while I was editing the National Running Show film I managed to eat three of them. A portion size I'm sure Carol wasn't intending but I think you'll have more willpower than me so if you fancy trying Carol's amazing chocolate there's a link in the description below. News! The GB team for the World Trail Championships have been announced and congratulations go to Katie Carr Sipperston, Joe Meek, Charlotte Morgan, Holly Page, Jasmine Paris, Georgia Tindley, John Album, Seb Batchelor, Carl Bell, Andrew Davis, Ricky Lightfoot and Andy Simmons. Let's make sure we all follow them on social media and wish them injury-free training and support them as they take on the technical 45km course in Miranda do Corvo, Portugal on the 8th of June. Some of these awesome athletes have already been interviewed already on Wild Ginger Running, so check out the description below for the films that they star in. And stay tuned to see more of them sharing their advice on a future Wild Ginger Running Wednesday night live chat at 8.30pm. In Wild Ginger Running news, Pascal Mathanay won the January competition and is now the proud owner of a pair of Lecky Micro Trail Vario Poles, the Ultimate Direction Adventure Vesta that I tested last year, and she will go to the Glenmore Lodge Trail Running Weekend in October with her husband. So congratulations to Pascal who won simply by signing up to support me on Patreon. See how you can do the same for this month's prize in the description below. This month's prize is a fantastic £300 to spend on any OM gear you like, plus a place for you and a friend at their OM Light event this May, and a free place for you on Paul Hobra's injury-free running workshop in Nottingham this March. Full details are on Patreon, again see the link in the description below. If you're already a patron, thank you so much for your amazing support, and keep an eye on that Patreon page for exclusive messages and updates to get the most out of it. Next up, I'd like to ask you all a massive favour. So I've made a film with outdoor clothing company Ellis Brigham to encourage and inspire more beginners into trail running. So I'd like your help now to spread this film far and wide because the more people we can get into trail running, the better. It's going to be out next Monday at 5 p.m. So if you could all share it with any road running, park running or new to running friends, that would be absolutely fantastic. It's question time. So last time I asked patron Tim Croft's question, what's your favorite trail run at the moment? And the best answer was actually Gary Middleton, who said to find trail routes anywhere, join a local Strava group and see where the other people are running. So that is an awesome suggestion, Gary. I hope that gives you some good ideas in the areas that you want to go running in, Tim. This time, my question to you is, how often do you run? There's no right or wrong answer to this. I usually run about two to three times a week and it would just be interesting to know how often you're able to get out. Keep those trail and ultra running questions coming and I'll answer as many as I can in next fortnight's Q&A. And if you want me to prioritise your question and be included in my monthly competition to win £500 worth of trail running and ultra running goodies, then sign up to support me on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Subscribe if you haven't already and click the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Thanks for watching, thanks to all my awesome patrons, have fun, enjoy your run and I'll see you on the trails.